Hello everyone and welcome to the next live of the Dutch Fruit Festival in Healthy by Wendy call. Um, today we will speaking with Tumi Johnson and Tumi is a medical doctor, holistic health practitioner and she will be joining us at Dutch Fruit Festival as one of our experts. I'm pretty sure she's an awesome mom because she became a mom in the meantime between us meeting and today and so here she is let's see how she's our live video and woohoo hello hi wendy can you hear me okay i can hear you just fine how are you ah uh, so good we've had a little bit of rain here in the canary islands which has been beautiful for our fruit trees but it feels so good to have some sun again. Oh yeah, yeah, we had some rain here too. Yeah, absolutely. We, we need some every now and then. The, the fruit yeah. trees need, need water as well, right? Exactly. Oh, it looks so nice and warm and sunny where you are. <laughs> I'm radiating it to you, radiating. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't, don't, don't worry, don't worry. I'm inside with the, how do you, the shutters closed and it's 26, so uh, I'm good. I'm you're good. you're I'm, fine. I'm hiding from the sun at the moment. <laughs> but a, a blue sky is always welcome. So welcome to this talk. Well, we see that a lot of people coming in. So hi, everybody. So nice to see you. Hey, everyone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So my name is Wendy and this is Dr. Tumi Johnson. I introduced her already a little bit before. And so Tumi, I would like you to um, share your passion with us. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit about your life. Where do you live? Do you have a family? And what's your passion? Oh, I love that you start with passion, Wendy. That's just right up my boat. Um, so I'm Tumi. I am living in the Canary Islands with my sweetheart and our two and a half year old um, little son called Sky. And this is our home base. We love the Canary Islands, but we also love traveling. We just came back from three and a half months traveling in Mexico and California. And then very soon we're going to be going to the Netherlands and Croatia and a few other places in Europe. So we have this home base where we grow fruit trees and um, just a place that nurtures our souls and then we travel and I'm a mama I'm a wife I'm a human um, I'm also a raw vegan uh, medical doctor and dancer and poet and I love helping people through my healing dances and through my expertise as a holistic physician so I often will integrate my dance performance my poetry and my knowledge as a physician, as a medical doctor, in integrated ways to help people achieve and sustain their best, most conscious, and what I call their most delicious life. So that's what I do. That's what I'm passionate about. And so happy to be here and to be coming to the festival this year. Wow, thank you. Yes, we're so happy to have you. So interesting for you to, uh, to come to... to really integrate western medical science and holistic health i i'm so i so love that so that's that's also like my, my passion so this is why i thought you'd be an awesome match to join us so i'm looking forward to that and you said a delicious life because you also also wrote a very nice big pretty big book i saw <laughs> Um, it's called Delicious Life or it's Delicious, delicious Healing. Delicious, oh, delicious Healing. I do have, I have a membership program um, with amazing human beings. And that membership program is called Your Delicious Life, where I guide people through dancing and through my dances, through meditations, but also through Q&A videos where I'm just answering their questions. And we have a topic every month. Last month was sexuality, healthy sexuality and Tantra and on how to basically have your delicious life. But it all started with my book and my book is called Delicious Healing. Oh, wow, amazing. We can all join your membership program. And this live calls are every week? 
or every month? Oh, great question. Yeah, it's an ongoing um, membership and you can stop at any point. But every week you're getting something from me. It might be a healing dance, a meditation. Every, every month we have a Q&A video where I'm just answering the questions of the members. I get questions all the time on social media. I can't answer all of them, but I answer the members' questions, Q&A video every month. So every week you get something from me, a personal vlog where I'm able to share my life and behind the scenes in a way I don't feel comfortable doing on YouTube. So that's what the delicious, Your Delicious Life is about, the membership program. It's just supporting people on living their best life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Living their best life. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> so delicious food, like, um, well, I heard a little bit about your passion. Delicious food. So what for you is delicious food? Hmm. You know, I'm a big, I love... Um, the idea, the belief that we are nature. We are sensual beings. We have these five, maybe six senses that help us be so connected to nature and our, and our own souls. I think we're spiritual beings, but we're also very sensual, embodied beings um, when we're living our best lives and our healthiest lives. So for me, delicious food is food that helps me honor and recognize um, myself as a nature being and helps me um, honor other nature beings, other animals, other human beings, and Mama Gaia herself. For me, delicious food is food that is delicious, that is tasteful on my taste buds, but also, Wendy, it's food in which I can be present. I'm not overly stimulated. I'm present in the moment. I'm able to take in the food. And here is another amazing part for me about delicious food is that I also feel good after the food. More than 10 years ago, when I was eating processed food, I was a pescatarian at the time. I was eating fish, lots of dairy, lots of processed food. I was a sick doctor, to be honest, struggling with disordered eating, asthma, eczema. I remember one of the best parts of going raw was that I would love the taste of the food. It felt so natural. I felt like the nature being I was. And after finishing the meal, I still felt good. I felt energized. I could go to my dance rehearsal and kill it, like in a good way, like really bring it. Um, so for me, delicious food is all these things. It is, it is food that is delicious at the time of eating, but also supports me living my most delicious life and feeling and looking delicious also. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it, what it does, as I can see. So does it mean you are 100% on raw food and your family as well? I love this question. I would say that I'm about 99.9% .9 raw. And the reason I say that, I leave that 0.1% is because I love this idea of choice, not dogma. If tomorrow I want to go to a, um, a vegan restaurant and eat something cooked, I have the choice to do so. I don't want to, and, but I love the spaciousness. I don't want to ever feel like I'm trapped in something of like, I have to be raw. So I say 99.9% .9 because overwhelmingly my preference is raw living foods. I feel my best that way. Mm -hmm. Cook food, if I ever do it, is a compromise. Um, and I rarely do it. I rarely do it, but I don't want to be ever pigeonholed into, into that, those labels. My husband eats a more cooked food diet, but he usually will have raw in the morning with me and then a second meal that's cooked. I have also two meals usually, but it's raw morning and evening. But again, for, for example, if I'm having um, raw sushi rolls, but the nori sheets happen to be toasted, I'm not going to worry. Like, I'm not going to, cashews are considered to be cooked, I eat cashews. So these are the ways where I might not be fully 100% raw, but I resist the labels and I just instead choose from choice, um, from freedom, from preference of raw and from um, self-love, really. That's why I choose raw. And my baby, uh, my two and a half year old, I should stop, stop calling him a baby. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he'll always be my baby, but he eats uh, mostly raw, but sometimes he'll eat Papa's cooked, very clean plant-based food, things like sweet potato a little bit, but mostly overwhelmingly raw, still breast milk, lots of fruits. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. All right. And then in your in your response, there is a really beautiful message for everybody watching this, mm -hmm. because I hear in your words the answer to uh, a problem or a question that most people ask, and that is, 
how do you keep up? I don't want to feel restricted. And I personally don't. And I hear you also don't. And I hear in your answer this um, choice. It's a choice. It's not about I don't want the other, I'm restricted. No, it's about me choosing right now um, natural food, natural living foods that are right in front of me. And I think that's that's really uh, awesome of you to mention that. So for everybody listening, um, go back, <laughs> go back to the video <laughs> if you are listening after and listen to this because this is how you can choose these foods and heal your body with raw foods without having to feel restricted. So that's really awesome. For Thank you for this, uh, for this uh, reminder. <laughs> a joy. I think it's about presence. I think it's about making a choice every moment for um, being your most radiant and beautiful and whole self. And that doesn't come with labels. That comes with, a, with, with choice and with freedom and presence. So mm -hmm. I want to make present choices. And mm -hmm. for me, this lifestyle is all about abundance. It's the opposite of restriction. I feel so free in my body. Um, and I see abundance. I'm looking at our um, almond trees and our cherry trees right now. And it's just like, they're coming into fruition and it's just mother nature and fruit trees specifically, like such a testament to abundance. So, yeah. And it's only our brain that wants to put this all in a box, you know, exactly. like we all, we all, our brain wants to label it, but our spirit wants to be free. free. And this is what I, I hear from you. And so people can choose the spirit living from the spirit from your own Absolutely. spirit not living from your brain thinking in the box it's like you 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 make the label in your brain it's great let it go <laughs> let, it, let it go now it's it's done it's over it's in the past uh, i love that so um what do you usually eat in these two meals fruits mm. like i hear you say you'd love raw sushi too with nori um yeah so what do you usually eat like a lot of fruit or great question or veggies I uh, yeah, I love this question also because I think it also points to the evolution of of our experience and our journey. When I first started raw um, ten years ago now, almost eleven, I um, it was just about me eating. I was eating three, sometimes four meals of fruit and greens a day when I went raw. But over time, it just naturally evolved. I think because I'm, you know, as a physician, I also know about the mucosa of the GI tract and how when we start cleaning up our diet and eating an anti-inflammatory, species-specific diet as frugivores with fruits and leafy greens, we're able to suck in those nutrients so much better and we don't need as much. And so I found that even as a breastfeeding mama of a healthy, plump, two-and-a-half-year-old boy, I don't really often need more than two meals. I'm very active. I'm dancing every day. I run a lot. I love swimming. Um, but I think it's because my assimilation is like so much better than 10 years ago. So my meals, to answer your question, look like first meal is juicy fruit or juice. Usually it's juicy fruit, but sometimes in the winter, I'll just do a lot of OJ, orange juice, freshly squeezed orange juice. Right now, we're loving melons are still right now in season. Um, so I, I usually love mono meals or maybe like a mono meal of something followed by a mono meal of something for, for my breakfast. Um, yesterday, I think we had melon followed by grapes. That was my breakfast. My second meal, my dinner meal is um, always like 90% of the time I have greens. The one time I don't have greens is when I'm on my moon. During my moon cycle, I coach women a lot on hormone um, hormone regulation and hormone cycles. When we are bleeding, when we're releasing that lining of our uterus during our moons, our periods, um, when it's not about building, it's about releasing. So I don't really crave greens and I don't think we need to force greens in. So I don't usually eat greens during my moon cycle, during my moon time. Um, but otherwise I love greens, the protein, the minerals. And so I usually have raw greens along for my dinner along with more fruit. That can be a, a green smoothie bowl. Um, and I usually have some sort of healthy overt fats. I love avocado, durian when I can get it, coconut. Um, but also I do love um, some seeds and nuts. Hemp seeds I love, um, walnuts I love sometimes. I'll do something with walnuts. I always soak my nuts and seeds. So I have overt fats most days, but about once a week and definitely during my moon time, I don't have overt fats. I just do fruits juicy fruits and let my body rest. Mm -hmm. I also tend to do like a cyclical 
um, kind of just fruits and greens, no overt fats during the solstice, which is coming up and the equinox. And I talk about this in my membership program more and also in my summer synergy cleanse where I do um, a seven day detox for people. I think it's beautifully done during the changes of the season. Does that answer your question, Wendy? Yeah, absolutely. And way more. It's <laughs> way more, way more than, way more than that. It's interesting how you're, how you're moving more towards the, the, the lighter, high vibrational foods during the period time, uh, and not into the greens. Uh, that's 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 interesting. I've noticed the same in the last. Uh, well, I'm only having my period for five years, not six and a half, but five years. Um, I noticed the same, but I also noticed the same about the greens before. Like before, I'm going like spinach to postulate. Like I want to eat all the all the, the herbs that yes. are out there. And then when it's coming, I'm like, watermelon is good today. Yes. <laughs> so true. <I'm> happy. <laughs> so, and that's what's so beautiful about this diet is I think it just leads you intuitively. The longer you're on it. I think intuitively your body knows what it needs. And it's interesting that phase you're talking about of wanting the greens is usually the luteal phase. That's before the menstrual phase. And the luteal phase is all about preparing again for your uterus to, to shed. And you have sometimes a burst in testosterone. So it's kind of a little bit of a building phase sometimes. And so it makes sense you'd be craving more greens during this time. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, I always know, like, ever since I had my boy and now he just turned nine, I know now when the when the testosterone's coming, when yes. the progesterone's coming, like, oh, it's this now, oh, it's this now, oh, it's this now. And I feel it's very beautiful how the raw food, um, and I'm pretty sure in your program, in your, in your membership program, that people start to notice this as well, that eating living foods are getting you more in touch with your body more in touch with your intuition and you can actually you know feel the patterns of your hormonal system and your bio rhythm and and it's going to match with what your intuitive attracted to and i know a lot of people are attracted to chocolate and me too like once i start i don't stop doesn't matter if it's just cacao or cacao nip like right from the fruit uh, you know <laughs> or that it's processed into some something but uh yeah this is interesting so if i may ask how are you doing with chocolate did you do you do cacao or carrot i love that question because i it reminds me that everyone is different and i think there's some people who that can be too stimulating and then it tends to because it's too stimulating you have increased cravings for it i've never had an issue with cacao meaning that i can forget about cacao for nine months and then i'll be like oh we have some cacao powder it's not the best to have cacao powder for nine months we've been sitting around but my point is i can take it or leave it i can take it or leave it there are other things for me that i need to be very mindful of that are too stimulating um if i start doing it i need to do it all the time salt is one of them oh yeah there's some raw vegans, they can do salt maybe here and there. For me, I have to be really vigilant because it can just mean that I want more and more. Um, cacao, not so much. I have cacao maybe twice a year, not because I'm trying to limit it that much, but just because I don't really think about it. Um, I also... I also, and I think cacao is powerful nature medicine. I do think it can be used by some people in a really beautiful medicinal way. But if you know, and I say the same thing with my clients and patients around coffee, because for me, coffee is like, <laughs> for most people, it is a drug. And it's very hard for people to take it and leave it. Um, and I always know when people tell me, have such resistance to stopping it. When I'm guiding them and detoxing, they're like, oh, no, 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 the coffee's no problem. It's just one cup. It's just half a cup. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, we need to let that go. So I think it's about being very honest. And that's all, again, about self-honoring. What are the substances um, that really trigger you too much that are too stimulating for your, for your makeup at this time of your life. Maybe it'll change. And then really honoring that and meeting yourself where you are. And that, again, speaks, Wendy, beyond the labels. I don't care about cacao or coffee being, whether it's raw or not, or raw wine. If you know that alcohol, even if it's raw, is going to set you off a path of just self-destruction in a way or just dis-ease, doesn't matter if it's under, under the label of raw, that might not be something that is the best for your food basket, I like to call it. So 
that was a long answer to say that I do cacao very, um, very, very occasionally. I prefer carob. I do use carob. Um, I think it's a beautiful form of magnesium and antioxidants and um, can, can mimic the flavor of chocolate if you're really wanting that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And absolutely, I, I, I'm, do, I'm having uh, acai berries. Uh-huh. And, and now I was using them and it's like, it tastes like chocolate. <laughs> like I, make, I was making banana smoothie with, and I was like, oh, it's like banana chocolate. That's interesting. Is and then you, my I, brain I was going, stimulant, 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 yeah, stimulant, you know. <laughs> If you mix um, dates, this is, I found this out and I just have never, dates, um, a, dark, a dark green, especially like maybe baby spinach or baby kale, but spinach, but I found baby spinach, dates and berries, like blueberries, acai, raspberries, it tastes like chocolate. There's something about that combination. Oh, I did that. Um, I did that. I did that. <laughs> That's actually exactly what I did. <laughs> And I, I keep doing that now. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Like, it makes me feel so... Like when I bought this acai, it's not like uh, fresh berries, it's frozen, but it's only the berries. Yeah. When I did that, I was like, oh, I mean, all my cravings, all my weird thoughts went away. I was like, oh, I was, there was something in there that my body needed, you know? Exactly. Because I, I'm living in Spain like you, like, but I'm in the mainland. And the food here, there's different food than in the Netherlands. So I'm, I'm so used to over there to eat all kinds of berries just from the trees and the, you know, the bushes. And here, you know, you can have only um, blueberries from the supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they are not really edible. <laughs> yeah. So that's interesting. That's interesting. Somebody asks you, what's best for om- omega-3? Ah, great uh, question. Great question. I will share this with you as I think this can be such a, there's such a thing craze about omega-3. And I think this also points to how people have gotten so far from our nature specific or species-specific diet that we have to now worry so much about these micronutrients and, and all of this stuff. Omega-3 is amazing, but it comes in fruits and greens in the perfect ratio. So if all you're doing is eating fruits and greens, and again, I don't necessarily recommend this long term for everyone. But my point is, if you're doing that, you're going to get your omega-3 ratio. That's really the important thing. Omega-3 ratio, 3 to 6. 3 is anti-inflammatory. 6 in excess is pro-inflammatory. Fruits and greens, no surprise, come in a perfect ratio. But if you want to sort of like bump it up because you're not eating all fruits and vegetables and you want to make sure you're getting good omega-3 ratios and amounts, I love omega-3 um, sources that include um, walnuts, chia, um, hemp seeds, flax seeds. Now, I will say I always recommend soaking before um, using these foods because they'll help with digestion and help to kind of minimize the anti-nutrients that are found in nuts and seeds. Those are my top kind of powerhouses for omega-3. Walnuts, chia, flax seeds, hemp seeds. But again, fruits and greens have them in perfect amount. Um, I also love seaweeds. I, I eat seaweeds, wakame, nori, dulse. Um, I found that even more important when I started breastfeeding because iodine is super helpful for thyroid, but also breast health. It's an incredible hormone supporter for both men and women, especially women. Iodine is found naturally in seaweeds. So I'm a big proponent of seaweeds. And seaweeds also are, are great for getting natural um, uh, omega-3 rich um, oils, like seaweed oils, which you don't need to go to a fish to get your DHA. You can get that from seaweed oils. So that's mm-hmm. the answer to that. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a really great share. Yes, yes, you see. It. And even for people that like like the salt as well, you get that as yes. a bonus. You get the, the salty flavor. How do you feel about these little plants that grow next to the sea? Like we have them in the North Sea, you have them in the Atlantic over there, we have them here in the Mediterranean. I love them, but I never investigated... Um, it's called Zeekraut. Uh, yeah, we have, we have many forms. We have sea cucumber, we have sea grapes. Um, they grow also when we go to Croatia in the summertime right by the sea. Yeah. Clearly, if you're in a place where it's pretty polluted, I would avoid them. But otherwise, if it's just natural, I love them. We just pick them and eat them. And you get that sea salt, but filtered right yeah. through a plant. A plant is an amazing, uh, uh, plants are so amazing. But the way they filter through their system, 
um, I think they're wonderful. And Three I counts I, of salty water, like exactly amazing. Yeah, yeah. And how about um, Dindor? And this is called sea buckthorn berries. Buckthorn. Uh huh. Sea buckthorns. Yeah. I love those. Look, I'm a big, I could, we could spend hours, you and I, talking about herbs. <laughs> like, no, I'm not kidding. Like, on our land right now, we have milk thistle just growing wild. Oh, um, yeah, that, no, we, that does, that's cool. Yeah, we have <laughs> Rose of Sharon behind me. We have another variety of cystus. Herbs are Mother Nature's medicine cabinet. I don't think, I think it's very important we don't abuse them. Sometimes, especially in the Western world, we think more is better, and it's not always the case. I think herbs are a great example of that, is that a little goes a long way. But using it judiciously and with discernment, and if you need to partner with somebody who understands them well, especially se they're, they're also seasonal. Wild herbs are not going to grow at a time when they're not meant to grow. And there's such brilliance in Mama Gaia knowing when to bring in these different herbs and fruits. When, you know, like the citrus in the wintertime, so high in vitamin C and uh, to help with maybe viral uh, um, load berries in the summer in the springtime when you're coming out of the winter and needing the the antioxidants and the flavonoids and the lycopenes and all of that to really recover from maybe winter there's such genius we can't replicate that and so i love the inclusion of of mm -hmm. herbs in a judicious way mm -hmm. i i so, so agree with you i believe that these are all plants and they're here for a reason and we shouldn't yeah. kill them we should use them for what they are that what they are for before before the factory made the medicine there was a plant with this ingredient you know before the factory started making it in in a white pail so that's i i and I, I love that so i'm so happy to hear from you that you're doing that and um sharing all this information about mm -hmm. it i think we have time for one more question unless you want to share something specific no this is wonderful uh, oh, what the rhythm says, thank you for answering. I lost period at 33 and had been vegan 12 months at that point. Any tips to help it come back? I think we just gave the tips, but do you have any extra tips? You know, I think there can be a period, um, <laughs> no pun intended, but there can be a period of time with a woman's period where she might lose it. Um, in, in, a, in a way that is healthy. She's doing, she's detoxing, she's cleansing, she's up leveling. Um, so I would say first not to be afraid of having a transition period without your period, without your moon. Um, so sometimes people can be like, this is not good. I'm, I haven't had a period in two months or three months. I need to bring it back. And sometimes I just recommend trusting the process of the detox. That being said, I think that at some point it's really helpful to usher it back um, I think we are meant to lose that lining in a healthy way, but it doesn't have to be a seven-day painful, highly um, bloody process. My periods are three days, super light, no pain. And that is so different from what it used to be, trust me. Um, so what I would recommend doing is uh, eating enough calories for wh what you, you know, and that's a whole other conversation, but making sure you're getting enough calories. If you're not getting enough calories, you won't be able to nourish your womb. And your womb is basically asking itself, can we house a child in here? That's a primal question. If you mm -hmm. don't have enough calories going in, there's no way it's going to just shut down hormonally. So making sure you have enough calories, I think is one of the most important things. And then I think for many women, making sure you're getting enough healthy fats. Um, and it doesn't have to be every single day. It doesn't have to be huge amounts. 10%. Some women need maybe 12% or a little bit more. But in general, getting healthy fats um, and enough calories. And then I think just this is my holistic doctor coming out, making sure you're doing things that nurture your womb. Womb is all second chakra. That's about creativity. It's sexuality and sensuality. What are you doing to nurture that part of yourself? Do you do yoni massages? Do you know about, do you engage in self-pleasure in a way that helps you feel loved by yourself? Um, all these things help to nurture a healthy cycle. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I also want to say to this water rhythm that you heard about Timmy saying her, you need the calories, but also because when you're detoxing, I have guided a lot of people as well. 
and you can lose your period when you go through a transition eating more raw food or doing a cleanse this is not the moment for your body to start making a period this is the moment for your body to clean up other parts that have been troubled and there is the energy going and afterwards well you you you'll be so lucky because your period will be go smoother and less pain and less pms and that's the experience of myself and i have with a lot of others i actually got my period back by going raw so amazing i love that so, and it was i think it was normal because i was also breastfeeding till two two and a half and uh, at this moment you know we went all raw and uh, afterwards we came back i was still breastfeeding but came back wow less painful as well so uh, yeah 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 Keep, nice. Just keep on going. You'll get there. Yes. Make sure you get your omega fats. Make sure you, you balance out. Not, not too much fats. Only the good ones from plants. <laughs> so, thank you so much. I don't see any other questions coming here. I say, hey, Sophie and Angelina. But, yeah, these people saying hello. So, um, I'm losing you to me. So guys, I want to thank you all for watching this video. We'll be rounding off soon. Ask see if she wants to share something. Um, in the meantime, go check out the Dutch Fruit Festival. Um, it's dutchfruitfestival.nl. We also have a Dutch Fruit Festival Instagram account. So you might be wanting to go there and like that page and then click our link go to the website and when you subscribe to the newsletter i'll send you a discount code we're in june and so you get 50 euro off the prices you see online and then you can meet us in real life in the netherlands look the netherlands here hey welcome back sorry about that I was just showing people the Dutch Fruit Festival and that they can meet us there um, 8th to 12th of August this year. And uh, that maybe you want to share some last insight before we end our conversation. Yeah, I'd love to. I'll just share that I think we're going into solstice season. I'm very much about looking to nature also for guidance. Um, we're going to solstice season. Whether you're in the southern hemisphere and you're going into uh, close, coming into the winter solstice or you're in the northern hemisphere and coming into summer solstice, and I just invite you, you know, with this first day of the month, and a new moon just a couple of days ago to really look to the energy of nature to harness that to guide you in whatever dreams um, Wendy started with the word passion whatever passions are stirring your heart that universe and nature and spirit is here to guide you so look to look to nature for that and um, I think Wendy will, will share already but uh, for more of my work you can find me on my website that's my home online drchimmyjohnson.com and I also have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel um, around some of the questions Wendy was asking what I eat in a day um, the idea about fasting um, and things around menstrual health and hormonal health and diabetes and raw veganism all of that many videos on my YouTube channel and the last thing is just the healing dances if you're interested if you really believe and I believe that art helps to instigate and um, set fire to, to healing in a way that just knowing facts can never do, um, then check out some of the healing dances I offer on my website. I have one on immune system. People are always afraid right now around their immune health in the COVID era. And I've been traveling a lot during COVID um, in a natural way with my family and staying healthy. And so I'm Unity is the healing dance along with holistic health tips on, on shoring up your immune system. I think I'll stop there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We'll all up our immune system by ourselves if we continue to eat like this and think like this. And, uh, Thank you for sharing all about our physical, spiritual, and emotional health and how we can heal that even more. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing you this summer. Uh, we'll stay in touch for sure. And thank you so much for this interview as well. 
Much love, Wendy. And thank you all for being here. Much love to all of you. All right. Thank you, people, for being at this video. Make sure that you like the page of To Me, you like the page of Healthy by Wendy and Dutch Food Festival. And of course, if you have any comment, feel free to um, write that in the comments below. Thank you so much and see you this summer. <laughs> have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.